I'm Jeff Zwerink, and I'm glad you've joined me today. I've also got in studio here with myself a good friend and colleague, Ken Wolgamuth, who's a geologist and has been working in the area of petroleum geology for more than three decades, and is also the founder of Solid Rock Lectures. And today, we're going to ask the question, can you always trust radiometric dating? Ken, good to have you here today. Um, this is one of those areas, again, as folks in the church talk about whether the earth is old or young, this is one of those areas that comes up of radiometric dating. And particularly, there was a group who studied radiometric dating, and one of their evidences that we couldn't trust it was that you get all of these discordant dates, or where you try and date things and you get dates that are different depending on what radiometric dating you use. So my question is, can you always trust radiometric dating? Well, if we use the word always trust, the answer would be no, because there are examples where it doesn't work. So I'm, I'm, I will give you some examples back and forth. In general, the radiometric dating methods were developed between the 1930s and basically the 1950s. Mm -hmm. And they were established by understanding the radioactive decay of long half-life uh, radioactive atoms so, so, so this is just the idea you know, get people just to speak, the, the idea that you've got the stuff that you have so much of it and after so much time, half of it will decay. After that same amount of time, half of what's left that will decay. Correct. This is what's yeah. been established and, and how we use it for a yeah. dating technique. So. so in principle, a key, core, a key component is that we can only date igneous rocks because of, the, of these methods. We can only date igneous rocks because it takes a rock that has been a lava mm -hmm. and crystallizes down to a solid okay. crystal. And it's the solid mineral crystals that will hold the radioactive parent atom in the crystal lattice mm -hmm. when it decays to a daughter product. Okay, so, so the idea of it being a magma is it's got to be able to mix and get new stuff in, but then it's got to crystallize so that what's in there doesn't go in and out so you can keep track of the daughter and the parent molecule. That is correct. Or, and we refer to that time as setting the clock to zero. Okay. In other words, that's the starting time. All right. Now, some of the half-lives are so long that we cannot date these igneous rocks if they're really fresh and new because it takes time for enough of the daughter product mm -hmm. to even to be produced to measure it. So, so the rulers, too. It's kind of like using a ruler to measure the width of a human hair or something. It just doesn't have the resolution you need. That's exactly right. Okay. Or my wife's favorite example is you cannot use an oven thermometer to get the temperature of the baby who's sick. That's a good point. It yes. just so. cannot work. <laughs> right. So there are examples that are put out there that claim it does not work but oftentimes it's a misapplication of when this particular tool could be used. That's commonly okay. what happens. So, so one of the areas where, you, so with, with the radioactive dating, you have to be using it in the right range or else you can't trust the dates that are coming out. Perfectly said, okay. I couldn't right. have said it better. Okay. So for example, one well-known one is potassium argon. Mm -hmm. And potassium argon is a, the process has a 1.4, Billion half-life for potassium-40. Billion years, you mean? Billion years right, for okay. its half-life. So in short amounts of time of just tens of thousands of years, or certainly tens and twenties of years, mm -hmm. it needs at least something like 50,000 or 100,000 years of passage of time before we can even get a credible, trustworthy date with potassium argon. Because you're not going to have enough daughter material to be able to measure it precisely enough. Bingo. Okay. Right on. Exactly. So that's one factor. Another factor is we'll see a series of multiple applications of the four or five different radioactive atoms mm -hmm. that are available, and they won't give exactly concordant ages. The question is, is this a problem with the individual methods? Mm -hmm. Well, one example scenario would be that it is not a problem with the area. It's the cooling time in that the temperature time zero was not set to zero at the same time for mm, all of okay. those different systems within just say a few thousand years when it, that rock may have cooled very, very slowly over a couple of millions of years or tens right. of millions of years and therefore the different clocks 
basically locked in time zero uh, different at different time. times. Oh, no, so that's yeah, one okay. factor. Okay. The other factor is if the crystalline rock gets heated up enough mm -hmm. long after it was first deposited and the timer was set to zero, mm -hmm. argon is a gas. So right. potassium argon, that's a gas. Right. So argon, the argon atom then escapes out of the rock. So it gives an artificially incorrect young age, and we know about that. So it sounds like when you do the dating properly, you can't just go and say, all right, let's measure X and let's measure Y, and therefore that gives us the date. You really have to be pretty diligent about, okay, where was this rock found? What was the environment? Yeah. You have to really be pretty yeah. careful about that or exactly. else you're, you're that, if you don't do that, you're going to be unsure of whether your date's exactly. correct. Now, are they often concordant ages? That is, they fit together? Yes, they certainly are. And one example, I'll give two examples. Mm -hmm. One example is a, a, a rock in, in, in Greenland, and I have a table that shows four different methods, mm -hmm. and they all give the same answer within the error bars of that measurement of about 3.6 billion years. So those, uh, that's, an exa that's one example. Right. The other example is even more dramatic. Uh, you're aware that an asteroid hit the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico about the time of the demise of the dinosaurs. Right. That event was so catastrophic to the Earth that it melted lots of rock mm -hmm. and it threw little spheres of molten rock up into the atmosphere. Right. And those spheres fell on um, Haiti in North America in Saskatchewan. <laughs> big the, explosion. Yeah, it, it was nothing. big. <laughs> the science community has collected and measured those little glass spheres for by different methods, and they have measured a hundred over 150 samples mm -hmm. of the same event of material scattered over these thousands of miles. And I have a table that shows those 150 measured in four different laboratories by three different methods, mm -hmm. and they all come out between 64 million years and 66 million years. That is just one of the most powerful, unbelievable concordance that demonstrates good credibility of radiometric dating methods.